Well, so and the other more dramatic thing to me is that, that was one month ago. That was one month, and the pres the, the president of the United States got banned from, from every major social network, and uh, which I think I'm still uh, deeply troubled by is yeah. Parler being removed from AWS. That changed the way mm -hmm. I. That changed a lot of things. As as somebody who's an aspiring entrepreneur. That changed the way I see the world. That little, yep. I, maybe I'm being over dramatic, but- No, you're not. I think you're paranoid for a reason. You're paranoid for a very good reason, which is as big as these companies can become, they are beholden to the mob. And if the mob says, hey, this person needs to be canceled, they're going to get canceled because you can't lose your entire audience. You could lose your whole customer base and you could lose all your employees. Yeah. I think- What's interesting about your fear about Parler and AWS taking off is we went from being like a social network, which is, you know, the software layer. And then we went to like the infrastructure layer, you know, and they'll even go after like Cloudflare, which is a CDN provider, right? They're just like a plumbing, you know, it's like sort of like the telephone. So we're, we're basically holding everybody responsible on, on the whole chain of events here. And what that's going to do is, you know... I'm not a huge believer in crypto, but distributed computing, um, where nobody and decentralized and distributed computing platforms um, and open standards, podcasting is an open standard, the web is an open standard, FTP was an open standard, but Twitter and you know uh, Facebook are closed. And what's going to happen is we will see a group of individuals create peer-to-peer -peer networks for social media where nobody can control it. And the same for cloud computing, where... You know, there's a there's a, a a crypto project where everybody will, and I invested in a company that tried to do this and um, got sold and it didn't work out. But take your hard drive on your computer at home, you give you know a terabyte of your ten terabyte drive over to the cloud, and then everybody else does their terabyte, and then all of a sudden you've got this virtual cloud, and anybody can store stuff on it, and it's all encrypted, and then nobody can stop it. And that could be tweets, it could be videos, and so this idea that you know, YouTube will be able to tell people, to kick people off because they're skeptics of, I don't know, the pandemic or the vaccine, or they've, you know, uh, it, they'll make things that are more censorship resistant. I think that'll be the reaction to all of this. Well, this is my question for you, going back to that crappy bar and people pitching you. Is is there, do you, like with Clubhouse, do you see competitors, do, do you think it's possible that another perhaps more decentralized or another kind of social media will emerge that will take on Twitter and Facebook and might be able to replace them. If you look at the whole landscape yeah. uh, with Clubhouse and everything else, do you think some other company might emerge? There'll be 10 versions of Clubhouse. We looked at social network and we thought Friendster was it. Like Friendster was so good, nobody would be able to compete with that. It was growing so quickly. And then MySpace was a juggernaut and they hit a hundred million in revenue and a hundred million users. And it was like, well, that's game over. And then Facebook and LinkedIn and Snapchat and FriendFeed and countless others, you know. So there's usually 20 people who will win in a category mm -hmm. uh, and 80% of the category will be owned by the top two or three players. Um, but will those players change, do you think? What's your sense? Oh, of yeah, for sure. I mean, if we if Facebook hadn't bought Instagram, it would be a company in decline right now. People would be shorting the stock, right? Facebook peaked and then was sort of heading down. Um, and Instagram saved them and WhatsApp saved them. So, you know, that's another kind of weird moment in history that they were able to accumulate that much power uh, and consolidate that much power. Instagram should have never sold to them. That should have gone public. They had just raised money from Sequoia. And they had raised $50 million at a $500 million valuation and they didn't need to sell. And that was a big mistake to sell. Uh, they should have kept going and they should have take, took on Facebook. And if Instagram was a standalone company right now, it'd be worth 500 million. Do you think- 500 uh, billion, yeah. Do you think uh, Facebook might buy Clubhouse has been- uh... Uh, They'll probably copy it. I mean, Zuckerberg has no moral compass or ethics or anything. I mean, he's a marauder. I mean, he basically <laughs> copied Snapchat seven times. Yeah. Like he did poke and he just kept trying and trying and trying. And it's part of the reason why the WhatsApp founders and the Instagram founders left is they found Zuckerberg so distasteful in terms of his ability to copy. What, like, do, you, what do you think makes uh, a great leader in that sense? Because, okay, so when I look at Zuckerberg- He's a uh, great executor. Is he a great ex? I, but I don't I, think he's a great leader. I was bullish on, I was excited by Facebook in the very early days. Sure. Uh, I thought it was an exciting opportunity to connect people and stuff started going wrong in certain yeah. kinds of ways. And again, maybe it's our human nature, but I attribute a lot of that to the leadership. Absolutely.
And I mean, the guy started it because he was unable to ask girls if they were single and on a date. I mean, that was his that explicit. That could be a good motivator. That could be a good. Well, motivator. I mean, it does. I mean, listen, right. the motivation of 18, 19 year old men yeah. is, yeah. yeah, pretty clear. Um, he was just trying. To, he had no game. He yeah. had no game, yeah. and he needed to know who was single so he could, you know, at least have a shot at getting it's a date. Creepy, a little creepy, yeah. You know, he he, I think, was so obsessed with engagement and winning. And he's he's kind of like one of those friends you have who's just really good at playing a video game, but maybe doesn't see the bigger picture in life. And um, I mean, there's a reason why everybody who worked for him hates him and doesn't talk to him anymore and then actively derides him. Like so many, this, the people who sold WhatsApp to him then backed other projects like Telegram and said horrible things about him on the way out. And these are the people he made billionaires. Yeah. Um, and, and they really don't like him. Uh, so I think there is something that he does that does not breed loyalty. Uh, but he's very successful in his focus, which is growth is all that matters. He's a marauder. And taking friction out of products and processes is the playbook of Silicon Valley for the last decade or two. So whatever the That's friction poetry, is- poetry, what you're saying right now. Yeah. So you're speaking so fast that yeah. I almost forget that you're you're dropping bombs. But so removing the, friction. the uh, removing friction, and you're saying Facebook is exceptionally good at removing He was the friction. best at it. I mean, at Uber, they were like, we're gonna take out tipping. We're gonna take out the need for you to take out your credit card and do payment. It's just gonna be in your wallet. You got picked up, you leave, that's it. And I was like, we should have tipping. And they're like, it adds a step. And we're trying to have no steps. You put your address in, you click the button, and you do nothing else. And so we've been obsessed here in Silicon Valley is how many clicks can we take out of the process? I guess Amazon is incredible at that as well. Absolutely. One click was the start of it. And then you look at Clubhouse as an example. You open Clubhouse and you see rooms, you click on it, you're listening. So yeah. in one click, you're listening. And then in one click, if you raise your hand, or you get invited and you say yes, you're speaking. Yeah. So it's two clicks to speak, one click to listen. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, the only way they could make that app work even faster is if you opened it up and your microphone was turned on and you, which is <laughs> yeah, that's kind of scary, but that is the next evolution. And what happens when you go that fast is you get unintended consequences. Yes. And so what, this is why Facebook has had more fines than any company in the history of Silicon Valley, just giant fines for doing stuff like this. And one of them was, I don't know if you remember when they created groups or if you have a group for your podcast, but you know, you can just add people to a group without their permission. And there was this famous case when they first came out with it, um, somebody created a NAMBLA fake group, National Man Love Boy Association yeah. or whatever, like yeah. Pedophilia Association. <laughs> yeah. And they added Zuckerberg, Mike Arrington, myself, and like 20 other famous people in Silicon Valley. And I was like, and then somebody uh, takes a screenshot of it and they're like, you're yep. in NAMBLA? And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, Facebook allows you to, and then Zuckerberg's response was, well, if your friends put you in that NAMBLA group, you should get new friends. And it was like, you got put in there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> then the sad part about it was there were a group of young men who were gay and who were in college and there was a gay choir in their college and the person who was coordinating their Facebook group added them. Yeah. So Zuckerberg, it wasn't enough for Zuckerberg to make it so anybody could add anybody to any group because it will grow faster, let alone you have to confirm you want to be added to the group. What it also did was posted it on their walls to increase engagement. And what yeah. they inadvertently did was they outed a bunch of 18, 19 year olds in college to their families because they joined the gay men's choir at some college. And this is the kind of way, you know, this is where Silicon Valley needs to check itself and, and to yes. do better is you have to really think, well, there is my incentive to grow faster. And then there's what's right for society and for the individual. You got to think it through, think it through. It's sometimes very difficult. This is where vision is required to sure. anticipate the uh, unintended consequences. And it, se it seems like Mark Zuckerberg is not uh, very good at that. I